So far, we have three very sort of basic styled buttons. We have a basic button, a function button, and a linked button, which is an anchor tag. And all of these are inheriting styles from our global style sheet. I've added in some sort of global rules since the last video, which will apply throughout the whole application around font rules and font sizes and some sort of CSS hacks, which help render the fonts a bit more clearer in certain browsers. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on styling the buttons themselves, and we're going to do this using styled components, which again is a CSS in JavaScript library. Now, if you've never used this package before, don't worry, we're going to be going through the setup and how to tie the styles to a component in this video. And by the end of it, you should have a bit of a better grasp as to how to use styled components. So to get started, we're going to go into our atoms directory, open up our button component, and at the moment, you can see we're returning a button HTML element and an anchor HTML element. But we're going to be swapping these out to our styled components in a moment, but we first have to write our styled components themselves. So to do this, I tend to create a new file in our you know, component directory, and I'll call it button.styles.jsx. And in this file, I'm going to import styled from styled components. And what this does is it allows us to tap into the styled components API and write a styled component. So to do this, we would write const and then the name of our styled component. So in this case, we're going to be creating a styled button. And then we will assign the value of styled dot whatever HTML element we want to return to our application. So in this case, a button. And then we'll use template literal string initiations to create a JavaScript template string. And within this, we can write our CSS. So if I wrote background color red, and then at the bottom of our styled component, we export it as a default, export styled component. We can now import this into our button component. So just under our package imports, we'll import styled button from button.styles. And then we will swap out our button element for our styled component. And now when we return to our pattern library, you should see that we have a very ugly background color red being applied to our buttons, but not our anchor, because our anchor is still returning the anchor element instead of the styled component. And now what this means is we can write styles in isolation, which will only apply to our button element and won't cascade for our application. Now, this is really good if you want to create components which won't be influenced from the cascade. Um, we're still inheriting global roles such as the font family, but we can write specific styles that will only render when we reference this component. So, to speed up the development of the styles, I will import some styles that I wrote earlier and then go through them with you. So if we open up our styled component component file and we will paste in some styles that I created earlier and save that. Now, what I've done is I've created some padding for the button just to give us some more space around the text. And then I'm using the background color with a reference to our theme provider that we covered in a previous lesson where we are bringing down a global theme value, which is our primary color and setting it as the background color. And again, we're doing the same thing for the color white on the text color. And then the rest of it is sort of just text appearance to help create a consistent um, text layout across all of our components. And we're adding in some box shadow too on the button component. So if we open up our button, we can now see it's styling a bit nicer than our ugly red button and the function button is looking very similar. But we still have the issue of the linked button looking completely different to our button component. So this makes sense because we're returning the styled component in the button instance, but we're still returning a default anchor tag in the instance where we get a href value. So to get around this, we could go into our code and 
return a styled button instead of the anchor tag, but by doing so, we'll be returning the wrong HTML element to our application. Now, we could again do an alternative solution, which is to copy this and then write it as a styled anchor instead of a button and then replacing this to styled anchor button and then exporting that. But we'll be repeating code and that's not really great. And if we make a change to the button, then we'll have to make a change to the anchor styles. So to get around this, we can tap into an API function that styled components provides, which allows us to extend an existing styled component and return a different HTML element. So to extend our component, we're going to write export const. So we're creating another constant uh, value. I'm going to call it styled link button. And the value for this is going to be styled and then the name of the styled component we want to extend. So in this case, styled button. And then we'll extend it with the attributes as anchor. So it'll be an anchor instead of a button. And then we can tap into the CSS rules again. And we could, for the sakes of demonstration, return a different background color. So we could return the secondary prop. And now we have a new export. We can import this in our button. So we can extend our import here to be styled link button as well. And we'll swap out the anchor tag for our new styled component. So now when I return to the uh, library, the anchor is still not aligned that well, um, but you can see that we're starting to style it very similar to the original button, except with a different background color attribute. Now, if I go and inspect the code, we can go and see why it's aligning a bit differently. Okay, so I think it's because it's not displaying as a block element or an inline block. So if we go ahead and go back to our CSS, we can write display inline block and then return. And you can see it's now looking a lot more like our button. Um, but we don't want to have a different background color just because it's an anchor. We'll keep it the same sort of layout, but we're just extending it. Um, if we wanted to, we could write specific rules for if it's an anchor and write them in our extension. But for now, we've got our button component and our, an well, our anchor element and our button element being returned by our button component looking identical. Now, this is great because it means we can use a button and use it in different contexts with slightly different users. So one could be to navigate to a different page or a part of the page. And then one could be for interacting with the page, say creating a, a login action or creating a logout action. You could have a button. Um, so we've got our start component, but we can take this a step further. What we can actually do with styled components is we can use the props that are being passed to the component to dynamically generate the CSS for the component. So we're going to add in a new prop now called variant, and we're going to pass the value of variant into our styled component. So just after our other props, we're going to pass in variant, and we're going to define this as a string. And we're actually going to use a new rule in our prop types to create a default value so that there's always a value available to our styled component. So we're going to use button dot default prop types. Default props is equal to variant primary. I believe that's the correct syntax. Um, yeah, that is correct. Cool. So now, if we don't specify any value of a variant, it'll always be primary. But if we specify a value, it'll override the default value. And if we return to our component, we shouldn't see anything new now. But what we can do is we could say um, in our stories, we'll pass our basic button, the variant secondary. So now it has a slightly different value to the default value. And then what we can do is because we're passing the value of variant directly into our start components, we can actually access this within our CSS rules. So by going to our button style um, component, we can actually go into background color and create a function which will dynamically swap out the value being um, the value being returned for our button styles based on the props available. So what we could do is we could say 
background color is actually equal to a new function. So const button background, and we'll accept props as an argument. And then within our function, we're going to do some fancy logic. So if no props dot variant return props dot theme dot primary, um, and then we're going to do a a switch statement in JavaScript, which allows us to um, alternate between different. Um, it's kind of like an if statement, but a bit more clean. So we're going to do switch based on the props variant. So this is just something I had pre-made for the video. So if we have access to a value variant being passed in, if it's primary, return the theme primary. If it's secondary, return the secondary value. If tertiary, then return that value, but by default, return primary. And so if we actually set color to equal nothing, so it's being primary just as a fallback, and then we'll return color. Cool. So that is still breaking. What am I doing wrong here? Okay. Okay. So I haven't got a uh, closing on the switch. Cool. So there's a lot going on here. So essentially what we're doing is we're passing in props and then we're passing it to a function. And then if we have variant being passed into the button, then we will skip this and we will start the switch statement. And depending on what value variant is, will depend on what color we return to the color, uh, the background color. So if we go into our pattern library now, you can see that basic button has a secondary background color, whereas the other ones have primary. And if we went back to our button and we went into our stories and we changed this to primary, then you can see it goes back to primary. So we're dynamically generating CSS on the fly based on the props that we're passing into our button. So we've covered quite a lot in this video. We've now got a button, which allows us to pass in a variant, which will change the CSS rules being applied. We've got CSS rules that are being swapped out for a button or an anchor. And we have these styles being written in isolation, which means that outside of the button component, rules will apply for the cascade in your application. But most of the rules will be tightly coupled to your React component itself.